it's easy to. When you don't have much money in your pocket, uh, you'll say, you know what, I'll quit. And do what? Mm -hmm. Do what? Mm -hmm. Journalism is about the best career that I have had, and uh, it has, it has, has it's, been a, it's given me a wonderful life. And I wish, I wish that on everybody, certainly at your school, and uh, who wants to be in journalism. And, and Jasmine, in terms of um, <clears throat> technology and that, you've seen a lot of changes. Um, and with the changing technology, it sounds like you're saying there comes lots of opportunities. Is that? Yeah. <clears throat> and so what, uh, but, but what makes a good story hasn't changed, would you say? No. So even though technology is different, storytelling is not. Is that no, right? No, correct. That is correct. Because a good story is what? Always a good story? Good story is always a good story, but you have to be accurate. You can't fudge a story. You know, it does happen. So number one is accuracy. Yeah, number one is accuracy. Number two? Is, well, number, number two is, uh, number, one, number one is find a story. When you found a story, you've got to be accurate, mm -hmm. and you've got to be honest. Uh, you've got to be persistent. You can be told, no, number, there's no way you're going to get the story. The ones who get the story are the ones who go around the corner and uh, show up. Sometimes they wear funny hats. Whatever it takes <laughs> to get the story. Mm -hmm. But you've got to get the story. And so uh, once you've got the story, then you have to tell it well also. I mean, you can't just... Absolutely. You, you have to tell the story well. It, it's got to, and to begin with, you begin. There's a start, there's a middle, mm -hmm. and there's a closing. Just think of it like that. Mm -hmm. It seems a simple thing, but you know, I, I don't never sit, sit down to write a story without thinking of the opening, the middle, and the closing. That, that way you've got your, your theme. Do you believe in the inverted pyramid, Desmond? The best stuff up front, the most important information up front, or what do you Yes, do? I think that's good. I think that's a, that's a sound idea. Yeah, an inverted pyramid is a good, good, good analogy, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then so all the good stuff up front, and be, so specific, or does it become broad and becomes more narrow? In terms right. Of but you know, at the end, you should always have a nice click. What's the click? Describe the click. Uh, a surprise. Like a tag. Give me an a example tag. of a click. Uh, well, uh, you're doing a story. Well, no, yeah. Stories. Well, okay. Say what, whatever. If we if we did the uh, and uh, if we did the, when we did the Sukarno story, how would it end? How would that story end? And then the, there would be a surprise. They said that we couldn't do the story, but we did the story. That's and it. So that's a surprise, right? Yeah. Can you do me a favor? Can you take the, uh, this mic cord is on here. We're going to oh. move this a little bit like that. It's on your shoulder. Right. There we go. And I'm just going to check the tape right. and see how our time is doing. 36 minutes. So tell me about, oh yeah, I have a little drink. Why don't we just take a two-second break here? I like your generosity, a two-second break. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we got to keep going. We've got lots to talk about. Okay, so we talked about how a uh, story works. Um, when you're doing your story uh, for writing for a newspaper, how would you, what's, let's say I wanted to write for the New York Times. How do I get a story in the New York Times? How would you get a story into the New if you if you, if you, if I wanted to, do I write the story and send it to them? Do I send a query letter? No, I think at uh, the New York Times today, it's um, every newspapers are, uh, I wouldn't say in the thro death throes, but they're, they're, it's a very tough business. Getting a job, but again, you could, uh, you, you don't start at the New York Times. You have to, you have to get, start your career. You're, this is Toronto. So you find a paper that will take you. Work at that paper. That now you've got some. You've got a credit. You've got to start low. Uh, you've got to start in your neighborhood. News is local, and that's the way to see it. The New York Times is called the New York Times, although it covers the world. It makes sure nobody does better reporting on New York City than the New York Times. So you would write an article and just submit it and see if they published it? Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you've got to. For example, in this town, is an excellent paper. It's a Globe and Mail. Uh, it's, uh, it's well edited, well put together. And I think you have a chance. Uh, I wrote reviews for the longest time 
to the Globe and Mail, and uh, uh, you know that's another thing you can do: write reviews. Mm -hmm. Possibly not right away, unless you feel, uh, you know. But as you go along, that would become something else you can do. How do you write for a magazine? I wrote for the New York New York Magazine for for quite a while. New Yorker. No, the New York New York Magazine. Right. And. Uh, I got six thousand dollars an article. It was pretty good. And that was twenty years ago. Uh, you have to have a subject. The, the one subject I did for them was, um, was which was a, which became a, the cover story uh, on New York. New York Magazine is still around. The cover story showed um, uh, Manhattan, and they had it all the skyscrapers like this, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, then. It said, New York is changing. And then I, I, I then broke the story up into how television was going to, it was changing New York. Television cameras were all over bridges for security reasons, right? Britain, there were even more cameras all over, right? Which yeah. is a story, you, you can film the story of the cameras They've gone hog wild because of the, the nature of people's need for security. But you do stories differently. A newspaper story is done differently a magazine than a magazine, and a magazine story is different from a TV story, right? Yeah, that's a good point. News, new, newspapers, daily newspapers, want daily news. Magazines it can be, it, it is, it's, it's timeless, really. It's, it's a, it, uh, it's a, you, you, and it's, in stories I did for New York Magazine, I, I tried to look to the future when television uh, would be very, would be widespread right. and it would be, uh, you know, it would be much faster than it was at the time. All right, let's, let's take a little example here. There's a little test for Desmond. We're going to do the Veranero's Bridge story. Right. The TV story, you take the camera up and what, what are you shooting? Just pictures showing the, the vista and what it looks like? The first thing, well, the first thing we did with the Ver Verrazano Narrows Bridge which is the most frightening story that I mentioned that I, I ever did, is uh, uh, the first thing is get up on the bridge. If you, if there's no point doing the... That's a good, that's a good question you asked. Uh, you don't start framing the story until you've got the story. Otherwise, you'll waste a lot of time if you don't get to do the story. So uh, I, I w wanted to make sure I could get up the Verrazano and Narrows Bridge. When that was okay, I shot, the, I shot the, on the top of the bridge, and then later went down and shot the four or five, the wide shots, and, and you know, and, and a boat and getting a, a, a ferry boat going through under the bridge. So you you provide the editor with a lot of of uh, shots. But television is less detail than say a magazine article. Is that correct? Like if you're doing yes. a magazine article, you're talking about how many tons of steel and numbers and figures and maybe show charts, whereas correct, TV yes. you would probably just show more general pictures. Is That's that correct, yeah. And then, so, uh, and then if it's a newspaper story, they really are more interested if somebody falls off the bridge. Is that right? Correct. Right? Because it's, yeah. it's happening now. Yeah. Um, or, or an event, like it's finished. The bridge is finished or the bridge began, right? Or yeah. you might have updates, but... Uh, a magazine article would be what? Much more in depth, more background. Yes, it would be. But either it's a, a in depth on a subject everybody's talking about. It's not usually it's not usually a story that um, breaks news. That's what you find in the daily newspapers. So the magazine is different. It's, if you want to say it's more thoughtful, I'd say it it has the luxury of, of, of instead of um, um, a column uh, or a five column inches. In some cases, in the, in the daily newspaper, uh, you you have something like six or seven pages in the, in a magazine, and you, it pays a lot better. All right. So in a magazine, it's more detailed, long term, whereas newspapers break news. Now TV does both, does it not? Correct. You can break news, or you can do and radio long, too. Radio too, and you can do longer form yeah. documentaries. You're bringing up a, g a good point. The, the world I, I started in and the world that we live in today has vastly changed. And today there is so much more choice. It makes it possibly difficult for young people getting in because it seems 
where do I start? But I think, as, I, as I've explained, uh, I didn't know when I started mm -hmm. how I should start. I just found a way. It's, I think you have a great advantage if you're at Ryerson, if you're at a, at a, a school of journalism. That gives you the basics. And that's, a, that's really a privilege, a real privilege to be able to study journalism. Would you say that a good analogy for your life was that bridge, climbing up that bridge? Because you didn't, every, sometimes you don't know what's above you, you just keep sort of focused on one point. Because it sort of sounds to me like with your life, you weren't really, you just, you'd try something, you'd take a step and things would happen. Right. Or, or you'd find yourself pumping gas and then you meet somebody and you get a job and then you get another job, right? Yeah. Like at the beginning of your life, did you know where you were going to go or just think, I haven't, I, I might like to try was it one I, step at a time, or did you see well in advance what you wanted to do? No, it's one step at a time, as I, I said, and I think in one of the very first interviews, you know, as I, I started delivering newspapers at 14 years old, of age. And uh, from that early start, I started reading the papers. And, uh, you know, so that's how it all began. Then the next step was you started to write for the papers, right? That's correct. And then you decide. Well, don't forget, there's a difference. Uh, I was 14. Uh, you know, I still had to, uh, to, grow, uh, to, uh, to grow up a bit, go to university, <laughs> but, a whole lot. But the progression was Correct. delivering, right? Yeah. You're deli like you're delivering the paper, then you're delivering, doing copy. Yeah. Then you were actually writing for them, being paid. That's right. That's right. right. Yeah. Then you moved to Canada briefly, then to the States. It always seems to be like, taking advantage of opportunities, is that right? Correct, yeah. <clears throat> and in the States, I, I worked in New York, but I also worked in Los Angeles. I was a bureau chief at an incredible time when they, in the 60s when there were riots hmm. the, uh, you know, that, that were taking place all over America. I covered on the East Coast the Watts riot and, uh, with, uh, with Martin Luther King. Uh, uh, I've, been, I've been with many, many... Did you meet him? Yes, I met Martin Luther King. Yeah. Did you interview I met him in Harlem. In Harlem, he slayed, yeah, Martin Luther King, um, he stayed in Harlem. He could, stay, he could have stayed at the Waldorf Astoria, but he stayed in a, a quite a modest hotel. Everybody feared for his life. Nothing happened. Was but in the end, as we know, he was assassinated. What was he like? He, uh, Gary, one of the most uh, humble, genuinely humble, and uh, um, sincere persons I've ever met. And actually, it's a phrase you use. He said, God bless you, when, he, he said, when we said goodbye to him. Wow. How many times did you meet him? Once. Just once? Yeah. Did, and you interviewed him, you said? Yeah. A TV interview? Yeah. Who was the reporter, do you remember? No, I was the reporter. I, I, I just interviewed him. Yeah, that's memory is um, faulty, but... But you remember that yeah, man yeah. particularly. So you, it sounds like you've had quite an interesting run at it, eh? Yeah. D do you think your life would have been different if you'd stayed in Britain and become a, uh, a physicist or a chemist or something? <laughs> it would, wouldn't it? <laughs> but I wouldn't have had, I don't think there's a single job, Gary, in the, uh, and of course I'm speaking with bias, but I don't think there's a job where you can have, get, have so much fun and get paid for it mm -hmm. and learn so much mm -hmm. and essentially be so helpful to people because, you know, it's in telling the truth uh, and taking chances, you know, it all ends up a very good life. What about um, being a doctor? Are you glad you didn't become a doctor? Oh, well, I, I think I once told you, when I was at university, I, I was madly in love with a, a, a medical student. So I went to see the dean of medicine, and he said, Desmond, uh, he said, how old are you now? I said, well, of course, I've been in the, in, in the, uh, in the RAF, the Royal Air Force. So I said, I'm 23, 24, 24 this fall. He said, well, you know, you won't be a doctor till you're, till you're 30 years old. Do you really want to devote that much time to it? I said, I'll be back to you in a day or two. I never went back. <laughs> never went back. <laughs> but you would have been a doctor if you'd gone for it. You yeah. would have been a doctor for many years. And it probably, be, it would, probably would have been a great life. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've had a greater life.
Isn't that a great story? Yeah. And then when you uh, when you got into uh, you you worked for CBC for a while, and then we can talk about this next time more too maybe. But you started the Oxford Media School. Right. What was the point of that? Why did you start that school? I thought it was a good idea for young people uh, who were interested in journalism to have a place to go. And it was, um, I'd say, yeah, I, I, I made money, I lost money with the school, but it ran for many, many years. And, it, uh, and, and, and you taught there too, Gary, and you saw, uh, you saw the, the light in, in uh, those young people's eyes. And they, they learned a lot about Britain, and they, and they learned it from the point of view of, of a professional, a young professional, shooting camera and, and, and great stories, whether in London or in, in London. Well, and some of those graduates from your school, I see them in, you know, out there in the real world doing real stuff, mm -hmm. right? So uh, obviously they, uh, they benefited from that experience. What was uh, the thing that stood up for you with those years in England? Was it the people? Was it the, the students? What, what did you enjoy about that experience? Well, of course, um, I liked the school, and, uh, and it goes without saying. Uh, I, I got a great deal of respect for the teachers, which included yourself and others. Uh, but and, but I, I also liked the idea that we could find stories. Do you remember the time we went to London mm -hmm. and we found, we, you and I would often find the story before we, we set the students on the story. We didn't, we didn't invent it. We'd have to clear the story, which is another point. You can't just walk in with a camera. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember the one when we did the very, very fancy clothing store, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, which I thought turned out to be pretty good. 